Moving on to our second question, how do advances in AI impact HR practice and L&D practice? So anything in the people profession, really, what are we actually going to see as the changes that come about as a result of this technology? Rada? Well, if we really boil it down, I think there's three areas that I'd like to highlight here today. I think the first one is around the tasks and the work that we do. So the impact on that is going to be AI can automate those routine tasks so that we can focus on more of the complex tasks, which require more of our human skills. And this is something that we're talking about a lot more um, within our workplaces and just generally in society. So these are skills like critical thinking. This is things like empathy and creativity that we can then focus more on. And as a result of that, we should be asking ourselves how AI can help us in our role in the tasks that we can that we're doing today. Secondly, the way it can impact us is through upskilling and reskilling. Now, for the HR profession, this means that we need to address this, but we need to address this at three different levels. We've got to look at what it means for us as individuals, as our own capability. Um, for those of us who are line managers or people managers, it's about looking at what that means for our team. And then thirdly, the broader workforce. What does that look like? How do we upskill and reskill people and ind individuals in our teams and our workforce to make sure that we're ready for what the future holds. And the pace of change is so fast that we have to ensure that we keep reskilling ourselves as we go along on this journey. And the third one that we need to think about, the impact is on our organization culture that we're driving. Now, as HR, we are custodians of organizational culture and we play a really key role in creating the right environment for AI. But what is the right environment for AI? Um, it's an environment and a culture that fosters curiosity. It encourages experimentation. It builds trust and enables us to work differently, which is a bit more agile than we have been doing before. So in essence, there's a lot of change that's happening and we need to create spaces where our employees also feel safe and trusted to operate in this new space. And psychological safety is really going to be quite key over here. So these are the three biggest areas that I see having the, the most impact. Perfect. Francis, what do you see as the uh, advances that you'd expect in terms of impact? Yeah, so I think for HR or HR and L&D, I was thinking of this from two angles. So one is, I think we need to examine the outcomes we're aiming for. Um, and the second is looking at almost like what is our functional work? What are the things that we that we go through? So in terms of outcomes, we've, you know, for a long time, we've thought about things like well-being, we've thought about performance, we've thought about productivity, we've thought about sustainability of organisations and so on. And we do that through things like performance, talent, recruitment, um, and things like that. I think... The question kind of of how do we create good work for people and people who are good at work has to be extended now to be how do we get the best from people who are augmented by AI? Um, is that how do you that sort of extra capacity that is created for them and how do you really optimise that? In terms of functional work, um, I think in the in the CIPD guide, we, we go through a lot of almost like each element. So I thought it might be useful to just use one sort of illustrative example. So I think, um, and as Rada touched on here, AI changes the balance of roles and the content of roles. In HR terms, that means our job descriptions should change. It changes the management practices. Those in turn have a knock-on effect into organisational design, organisation structure and workflow. Um, those in turn um, will change the job mixes in the organisation. Um, in turn, that has a knock-in impact into the skills we hire for, the training priorities we have, what performance is managed and what is rewarded. And then all of that needs to be backed up by the right policies. So you kind of start off with the introduction of these tools that actually flow right through all of, all of HR practice. And I think we need a bit of a root and branch view on, on are we set up right to make the most of it. 